Welcome to another episode of Vietnam Discovery. When we're in the, right in the middle of the Mid-Autumn Festival in Tuen Quang Province. And uh, a few days ago I had no idea what this uh, festival had to offer, but it's been such a joy finding out and I hope you come along with me for the ride. Hi, my name's Cameron. I'm from Australia. People often call me Cam, which means orange in Vietnamese. And luckily, oranges are refreshing and sweet, just like me. Quite the coincidence, really. I used to work as an environmental engineer, but last year I decided to change careers and allow more time to travel around and experience life in Vietnam. I've arrived in Thuyen Quang during mid-autumn. From the very first moments, I've been struck by the magnificent landscape and the intriguing history. The name, the capital of Vietnam's revolution, has been mentioned a lot when people tell me about this land. So here we are in Tân Chau historical site, uh, a really famous, important uh, place in Tuyen Quang province. Uh, behind me here, you'll see this uh, really large banyan tree, which is, um, has great significance for um, President Ho Chi Minh and his colleagues spent, some spent a lot of time here preparing for the August Revolution in 1945 and a must-see for anyone wanting to come and visit this region. Located about 165 kilometres to the northwest of Hanoi, the city of Duen Quang, the centre of Duen Quang province, appears similar to many other modern regional cities around Vietnam. Here, the streets look much like those in Hanoi. For my first time in Duen Quang, I'm really curious about the Mid-Autumn Festival here. It is the festival of gigantic lanterns and is the only place in Vietnam where this tradition has developed. <laughs> <laughs> Today I'm going to Ward No. 5, Tan Quang, district of the city. This place is known as the cradle of the festival. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, thì làm cái mô hình để dự cái đêm hội thành tuyên. À, tại sao chú làm? Chú làm là nhằm cái mục đích cho các cháu vui chơi và để có một cái đêm hội lung linh. Nên chính vì thế nên chú mới làm cái mô hình để diễu trên đường phố để tạo cái không khí lễ hội nó tưng bừng hơn, các cháu được vui hơn. À, năm nay chú làm thành gì? Năm nay á là chú muốn làm một cái con ngựa dựa theo trên một cái tranh ban má thế nhưng đó là ý tưởng của chú thôi cái này á là chú phải đi ra tổ nhân dân để họp xem xem là mọi người có nhất trí không cam sẽ tham gia cuộc họp đó chứ <laughs> uh, I definitely felt very welcomed and, and very uh, comfortable um, and everyone treated me uh, very well and with respect and, and ease so uh, it, it made me feel very comfortable to, to be around. Theo tôi nghĩ thì năm nay là cái năm ngựa, năm giáp ngọ 
thì bản thân tôi cũng có một cái ý tưởng là nếu mà làm được một mô hình về con ngựa thì nó rất là rất là tốt bởi vì con ngựa thì nó rất gần gũi với con người xưa kia là cha ông ta là đi chiến đấu là bằng ngựa tôi thấy là làm con ngựa thì thì là rất tốt rồi ta cũng tiếp tục là cho ý kiến tôi hoàn toàn nhất trí là làm mô hình bát mã kinh phí đóng 100.000 trên một gia đình ấy liệu có đủ để làm tám con ngựa không thì theo tôi hay là làm một đôi ngựa kéo cái đẹp sao ấy nó cũng có ý nghĩa là trung thu cho các cháu cái mô hình này ấy tuy là nó lớn thế nhưng mà ta lại vận dụng những cái vật liệu thực tế ta có ở địa phương chẳng hạn như là cây tre thôi Đấy. chứ ta không làm sắt hay là ta chỉ làm với gỗ thôi thì ta đòi hỏi bàn tay ta thế chứ còn thực ra thì cái kinh phí nó cũng không quá lớn chủ yếu là do cái nhiệt huyết của bà con là chính thôi đấy là cái ý kiến của tôi một tám con người thì công của chúng ta bỏ ra cũng tương đối là nhiều chứ không phải ít phải làm nó tương đối lâu thế nên là tôi chỉ có ý kiến là chúng ta bây giờ là bàn xem là cái kinh phí là mỗi một gia đình nên đóng bao nhiêu và và thứ hai nữa là chúng ta phải cả toàn kết Đấy là những yếu tố mà để chúng ta thực hiện. Còn thì về vấn đề cái mô hình bát mã là tôi hoàn toàn nhất trí theo như và cổ viết là mô hình là bát mã. Năm mươi ba bằng một trăm phần trăm tổ nhân dân là bà con nhân dân trong tổ đã nhất trí làm mô hình bát mã. Cuộc họp tổ nhân dân là đến đây là kết thúc. Thay mặt cho tổ nhân dân, xin tôi cảm ơn các bà con. Xin giới thiệu bạn là bạn Ca, là người đấu đến tham gia cùng với tổ nhân dân ta để làm mô hình con ngựa. Bạn hết sức cố gắng cùng chúng tôi để hoàn thành cái mô hình. Cảm ơn Well, it's really special to uh, be invited to join this community meeting here today. Um, a, a wonderful and friendly bunch of people and um, a, a real commitment and passion they've shown to, to creating a, a really special mid-autumn festival this year. Um, there's a, a lot of debate and negotiation back and forward to, to come up with a final plan and, and a really ambitious plan they've come up with to create a float with eight horses and um, I, feel, I feel a little bit daunted that I'm, I'm going to have to help make one of those horses and uh, I'll uh, wait to see exactly what I have to do with that. hai mươi lăm một ô này dạ yeah. cái này là một hai nhá ừ quan chủ một hai này So drawing the outline of this horse was my first big test in front of the community and I really didn't want to let them down. You can see that I got my serious game face on and I uh, concentrated like I never had before. Unfortunately, Mr. Thang did have to redraw a few too many of my lines, but I eventually got the hang of it. <laughs> So here we have a scale drawing of our horse, uh, built up from just this tiny little drawing here. Um, unfortunately, I think this was the easy part, although it did take me a fair while. Uh, and now hopefully uh, Chu Tang is going to show me how to turn this drawing into a full-scale mo wooden, mo wooden model of a horse. And hopefully we can get it done before the, uh, the festival. So now we're building the uh, inside wooden frame. I think that's the, the sturdy, the sturdy strong frame that everything is going to be else is going to be built around. So. It's, uh, hot, sweaty work here. You can see uh, Chu Tang is building up quite a sweat.
quite the operation here. We've got uh, everyone involved doing little bits and pieces and some cutting and drawing and, and, uh, and gathering materials, so. I think the easiest part of, of, of making the, the horse lantern was um, probably the making the, the solid wooden uh, frame structure that goes inside the horse at the start. Um, I'm a little bit familiar with uh, using saws and hammer and nails and, and chisels from some of the things I've done back in Australia. So, yeah, so I think that was probably the easiest for me. Okay, now we're onto the real business of setting up the frame of the bamboo. Ah, yeah. So now we're getting into the, uh, the the bamboo frame of the of the wooden horse here, um, and as uh, 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 Chu Tang was telling me, it's it's all really about the the artist's uh, uh, presentation of, of how they uh, shape the shape the bamboo, and so um, getting the getting the curve just right is very important. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, very sore. Oh. Oh. This is mighty stiff work bending down that whole time. Need to do a few stretches to get the back moving again. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> get all the sweat on this man's face. <laughs> making, making me make it look easy. Why? <laughs> Why? Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. yeah, she's a real beauty, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm gonna name her Gloria. Yeah, after the uh, the horse that my parents wouldn't get me for my tenth birthday. Very, very disappointing. Oh, it's great to see her taking shape here, full shape. And um, all that's left to do now is to put some bamboo strips around her and uh, get, let the body really flesh out and take shape. And so we can then start to decorate and uh, get her ready for the festival. Um, amazing life-size horse we've got here. And uh, incredible um, patience by uh, Chung Pang to, to help me along through the process. I'm very grateful for it. Just getting warmed up. <laughs> Which is really amazing to see and, and seeing all the all the different families that came throughout the period that were making the horse to to pitch in or to help in and to, um, and that were interested and just came along to talk and to chat and brought their children along and, and it was really, really nice to see how uh, interested all the children were in coming and having a look to see what was, uh, what was happening and, 
and um, they were obviously very excited to see see the creation unfolding before their eyes and and um, and to be around it and to be playing with all the different bits and pieces that were around and and uh, having a good time and uh, and so yeah I can really appreciate um, the effort and the commitment that the whole community goes to in uh, preparing these these things uh, for the for the children and and um, it obviously uh, does its job because the, the children seem to have an, a really fun time with the, everything that, that goes on. Này nhá chiều 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 dây điện ông phải để dưới hộ tôi cái nhá. Cứ cắm thẳng vào đấy luôn không buộc. Cái ở bên này. There we go. Just putting the finishing touches on uh, the lighting system inside this horse. It's got a huge amount of fluorescent lights in here. It's going to light it up like a Christmas tree. Very excited to see what it looks like. Um, uh, Chu Tang has been extremely patient and helpful in, in teaching me how to get this thing into uh, its final shape. And um, now it's time to put the skin on it and uh, color it up. So, Chu Ai, Di. Ai, Di. And then we moved on to um, uh, with the with the women in the community putting on the 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 clear plastic uh, wrapping around the outside for the skin of the horse, and um, that was yeah, it gave it, that was quite a different feel uh, to that process compared to compared to the men um, uh, running that process, and and so I, yeah, the women just got in there and. And did it, and there was there was very little uh, um, instruction or anything, but um, it was quite uh, easy to understand what they wanted, and just to to um, and to uh, join in and handing them tape and holding up holding the holding the um, the plastic where they needed it to be and. Then came the painting, the spray painting, a bit like a spray painting a car. I didn't quite get my way with uh, wanting a very colourful, multicoloured horse, although I tried to convince uh, Chu Tang to, <laughs> to make it a, a, um, a wavy, curly pattern of some kind with dots or something, but I'm still very happy that we've got a, a, a very bright and colourful horse with pink skin and yellow hair and a yellow tail. I knew you'd come to the lab, mommy. Beautiful girl. Good girl. Yeah, that's it. We've given her a face, we've given her some ears and a mane. Yeah, Gloria, you're gonna be the queen of the parade tonight, aren't you? Yeah, excellent. Almost done here. Ready just for the finishing touches. We're gonna put some lights on the back here. We're gonna light her up like a, like the lantern she is. Well, after completing Gloria, I'm now indeed excited for the parade of the Mid-Autumn Festival. While we wait for the sun to go down, I think I might go for a tour around the city. The colourful and joyful atmosphere of this city that I've felt since being here makes me want to discover more of this interesting town. Mooncakes are a must for the Mid-Autumn Festival. There are many folk tales about the origin of this cake, However, there's one thing all people seem to agree on, and that is, mooncake is a beautiful cultural tradition which conveys warm sentiments among the people here. Here we are in one of the oldest bakeries in Dwinplan uh, province about how to make the mooncake, an absolutely critical part of the Mid-Autumn Festival. Uh, it's a tradition that goes back hundreds of years and it's an old, old family uh, run uh, bakery here with uh, using a secret uh, recipe that they've handed down from generation to generation. And, uh, you see all the activity going on here, making hundreds and thousands of these 
uh, mooncakes throughout the festival time. And, and uh, I understand there's two different types of mooncakes which we're going to learn about. And um, hopefully I'll get a chance to make my own, my own mooncakes and get a chance to taste them as well. Some similarities between the Van Noem and the traditional Christmas pudding from uh, Australia and, and other parts of the world. Um, but from what I understand of the, the mid-autumn festival, it's, it's uh, a, a fun, happy time and a lot of celebration and attention given to children. And that's also the case for, at, at Christmas time for, for many parts of the world. We have Santa Claus coming and bringing presents for children and, and those kinds of things. ลามเถอะอ่าพอแก่พอแก่ลามเถอะอ่าอันนู้นอ่าหมกไก่เอ่อชื่อลามลามหยกไก่หยกเอ่อหมดเอ็นห้างิงไก่หมกไก่อ
And so let me just make sure I can read these. Bang nuong, bang xiao. Bang nuong, bang xiao. Bang nuong, bang xiao. I think that's right. Back to ward number five and Mr. Bang. I'm now joining hands with the people to prepare for the Mid Autumn Festival celebrations. Tonight, the children of the community will have a big party. That was really nice to see, and it's definitely something that doesn't happen in big cities. Um, uh, like any, yeah, very much anymore. And um, um, but I mean, very similar to stories my mother and grandparents would tell about their childhood in Australia, uh, similar communities, and definitely in, in, in the country areas in a, in Australia, where it's a, quite a similar experience. But I don't think probably to the, to this extent where people seem to spend a lot of time together. I can feel the love the local people have for their children. They build the lanterns to create an exciting and magical experience for the young children in their community. Particularly in Vietnamese people's belief, the Mid-Autumn Festival is for the children. I wish I could have um, uh, rehearsed and practiced maybe like a Vietnamese children's song to be able to sing, but I, <laughs> so I didn't have much time to prepare. But um, it was it was really great to to hear them all clapping along and and enjoying. In 2007, for the first time, the mid-autumn celebration received a lot of attention from the public in the city. The gigantic lantern made by the people of Ward No. 5 that year is considered as the seed from which the amazing festival we have here today grew. The lanterns became a unique cultural trait of Duen Quang. They are only found here and they are recognised in Vietnam's record book. After seven years, what started as a private activity is now celebrated as a festival of the entire province this year. The ideas for making these gigantic lanterns mostly come from popular Vietnamese folk tales, which highlight different morals of life. It appears that most children are aware of and understand the stories and meaning behind the giant lanterns. I know about the legend of the watermelon, where the will of independence is taught to generations of Vietnamese people. I can imagine such colourful lanterns will go along with the children throughout their lives, and when they become adults, they will tell the stories of lanterns to their younger generations. And I guess that is the way these traditions are built up in Vietnam. Oh, what a wonderful journey this has been. I hope you've enjoyed it almost half as much as I have. It's been an absolutely fantastic experience finding out about this uh, mid-autumn festival here in Tuen Quang province. Uh, the people have been so wonderful and uh, the children who have had such an amazing time, seeing the smiles on their faces as they all ride along these huge big lanterns has been just a joy to behold. So I hope you'll catch you next time on Vietnam Discovery and we'll see you again soon.